any man that watches Hallmark movies and enjoys Hallmark movies is a lover. Travis is a perfect man. It's like Taylor's dream. Hello, welcome to the TMZ Swift Tea Podcast. I'm your host, Melanie Miller, and today we're joined by Erin Cotton. If that sounds familiar, it's Charlie Cotton's wife. We're really lucky to have her. She's a huge Swifty. Huge Swifty. Thank you so much for having me. We're so excited to have you here. Are you going to be anything like Charlie? We're going to find out. Absolutely not. <laughs> it's about time we get to set the record straight. About time you get to set the record <laughs> yes. straight. So breaking news of the day. Maddie Healy ha- was caught out in L.A., and was asked about the diss track, which I'm not gonna lie, I, I didn't feel like this reporter did a very good job. Hey Matt, how would you rate your Taylor diss track compared to the 30 others? My diss track? Yeah, Taylor's new song. Uh, I, haven't, I, haven't really, I haven't really listened to that much of it, but I'm sure it's good. All right, Thanks, man. have a good one, man. He said, hey Matt, how would you rate your Taylor diss track compared to the 30 others. Which diss track are you talking about? And most of the album is about Maddie Healy, so what are you doing, sir? Um, And he said, you know, you're a diss track. Maddie says, I haven't really listened to that much of it, but I'm sure it's good. And isn't that kind of BS? Because didn't his family get a... Oh, his, like, Mm -hmm. aunt said she didn't know there was an album coming out. His mom said she didn't know there was an album coming out. I mean, I guess... But I kind of like the way that Matt Maddie said, like, I'm sure it's good. Like, in the way that he's like, he's always been a fan of Taylor, yeah. always been a fan of Taylor's music. So no, I she's took, a good writer. She's a great writer. I took that in honesty that she, he was like, and it's almost like. How have you not heard it? <laughs> it's, well, he said he has heard some of it. But I think to Maddie's point is like the r- person asking the questions didn't specify so how is he supposed to say like yes i have heard i this like song. this one or yeah, yeah this one's like, accurate which one are you referring to True. are you referring to the shortest man that ever lived the tortured poets department mm-hmm. are you referring to like ha- guilty as half of the uh, freaking album yeah no i don't think he did a good job either he should have specified and he also should have pushed harder and said why haven't you right why haven't you why haven't you and what are which, you hoping to hear and which songs have you heard specifically and what are you scared to hear yes anything you can confirm but i do feel like he did hear some of it and i think he honestly likes the album and i think that like joe he's the complete opposite of joe allen yeah because i think he would listen to the album and i think he would be critically he has respect for the music. He has respect for the music. He does the same type of thing. Yeah, and he'd be like, okay, I get it. I agree. And um, I don't know about you, but I've kind of like gained a little bit of respect for Matt Healy Tell me why. for all this. I don't know. Um, because I feel like Taylor was so confident writing about how much they, you know, they had this long-term connection, getting back together with him. She was so confident about putting it out there, but they still seem like they're still cool and respect each other. I do have a little bit more respect for him. Do they seem like they're still cool? I think so. Like they don't. He. I feel like he has every right to come out and be like, you know, this is what happened and be really mean and nasty like so many other people are. Mm-hmm. And because he has a huge oh. platform, too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But he he's not. And so I kind of have a bit of respect for that, that he's respecting the music, respecting her for letting it all out there, letting her put it on the table and moving on. Yeah. I just feel like I don't like this whole thing has confused me because Demois reported about how they didn't really care that they ended mutually. And I yeah. kind of believe that because mm-hmm. of how quickly she moved on with Travis Kelsey. So some of these songs where people are like, oh, the situation chips are harder than the long term relationships. And mm-hmm. all of these hard hitting songs are about him and how broken hearted she was. I was like, Cause they were kind of friends, too. Because they were kind of friends. Yeah. It's just it, it's hard for me to like be like, I, I kind of buy that it was a mutual ending and that yeah. it was like kind of whatever. I did you? Yeah. But maybe it was more about the past and, like, how they'd been dating before. And that, like, longing. Yeah. All, you know, always wondering what if. And that's why I don't buy that the smallest man that ever lived is about Maddie Healy. I, think I don't either. I okay. agree completely. Okay. I'm glad we're on the same page. And that's maybe why I don't hate him as much as I thought I would. Yeah. Because I don't think that song was about him. Yeah. And that song is rough. Rough. And yeah. I hope it's about Joe. I honestly. think it's just—is it, it just us wanting it to be about I, maybe, Joe? Maybe, but I really—I've listened to it so many times. I have 
tried to talk myself out of it, but I really think it's about him. I really think it's about Joe. Because she has no respect for Joe. None. And that's what I mean. Is like she has respect for Matt Healy. Yeah. But she doesn't have any respect for Joe. And that song tells me it's about somebody she hates. That she really she wants to forget it. about forever. She wants to see him dead. Yeah. Um, speaking of, let's actually talk about this breaking news topic of the day. So a source close to Joe Alwyn told the <laughs> Daily Mail. I don't know why he's always going to the Daily Mail with this stuff. It's like his favorite outlet. I know. And pretending like it's not him. It's you. We know it's you. We know it's you. We know it's you. <laughs> um, so uh, there was a report out that said there has been absolutely zero contact between Taylor and Joe. A source exclusively told the Daily Mail she did not run these songs by him, but he did not expect her to. Joe has listened to the album and he is slightly disappointed, but not surprised at all. Oh, please. Oh, sure. You were there for the good. Be there for the bad. You're a narcissistic asshole. I can't stop thinking about him at the Eras tour and her thinking about writing the song um, uh, I Can Do It With a Broken Heart and him like that. I just keep picturing her on stage looking at him like. No, he was never there. He didn't go? He didn't go to a single Eras tour. Oh, my God. He never went. And he's saying that he supported her. Yeah. When? Oh he went God. to like a few Reputation Stadium tours. Horrible. Um, the it, oh, she didn't really trash him or defame him. Yes, she did. And he's like, he's <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, to it. <laughs> everything is about Maddie. Oh no, sir. my god. No, sir. We will not let you get away with that. Joe is not going to react to this. Uh, okay. Well, as if he's ever reacted to really anything. I hope you stay off the streets of L.A. Because yeah, you're I gonna get him. I hope I get him. Oh. I hope you get him and not Charlie. Oh, because if Charlie gets him oh, at the airport, can you imagine? Charlie would be like, Joe, For- I'm sure it's been really hard on you. Oh, I would kill him. I would kill him. <laughs> <laughs> would kill him. And for once in his life, he gets a shot. He has to give me that shot. Melly, get to the airport. Yeah. Wow, when it's here. He has to give me that one shot. That could ruin your friendship if he didn't give you that shot. Oh, we'd be dead to each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally worth it. Um, the insider explained that Joe was more than aware of Taylor's songwriting process. Thanks to, thanks to the tracks they created together because he has made so mm. much money off of her albums. Like, if you get to collect her coins yep. for all the tracks that you wrote together, you get to sit through all the shit too. And, yes. and shut up and allow her to speak her piece. And, and if you don't like her speaking her piece, you speak your piece too. Totally. I completely agree. And also, he's an artist. Or he says he's an artist. He should know the artistic process. He, She has every right to say whatever she wants. Yeah. And if he wants to say something too, but he's so blasé about it all. And it's just, it aggravates me. This is what proves he's not an artist. Because if he was an artist, <laughs> he'd understand. Mm-hmm. You're a fake actor. You'll never win an award. <laughs> I hope. Um, he made a ton of money off the relationship, blah, blah, blah. We don't care about you. He has a movie coming out that he's focused on. The source stated he will be doing press, but he will not be entertaining any Taylor questions. I hope that somebody gets in there and just, like, states the question in a way that, like, is a shot at it. But, like, maybe he's not smart enough to pick up and then we can all just laugh at him. Or they come in with um, a Taylor Swift shirt on and a blazer and they just open it slowly during the interview. (laughs) So he knows exactly where it's going. Good luck. Oh, my God. He would get out of there and run so fast. Yeah. I hope that's on video. His PR team. I can't can you imagine? for him to start having to do interviews. I know. I just want to know so bad what he's thinking about it all. I want to know what Charlie Puth is thinking, too. Right? Oh, I've been dying to get Charlie Puth out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's moved on. Joe's moved on. Good for you. Hope that your um, career is a failure. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. If I see you on the street, I will give you a professional and fair interview. (laughs) Okay, so uh, another breaking news topic of the day. Kim Kardashian posted a photo with Carly Kloss, Taylor Swift's nemesis foe. Because back in the day when her albums were going to go up for sale, she was really close with Carly Kloss. Probably shared that information with Carly Kloss. Carly was really good friends with Scooter Braun. Yes, through her husband. Through right? her husband. And so Taylor has probably theorized that the reason that Scooter Braun found out yeah. about it was because of Carly Kloss. Taylor wrote a song called Thank You, Amy, capitalized K-I-M. Yeah, that's wild. Monday night. 
Kimmy goes on her Instagram and posts a photo with Carly. It's like, ma'am, you so Kim has Kim has come out and said Well, just after she was on Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel saying she's unbothered. She's unbothered. And, and, and Kim, Kim has come out and said that it's been literally years. They're like, move on. Like, why are you still harping on this? You move on, Kim. You're yeah. the one that that sh- that has fired a shot again. Kim's too smart. She like, knows what she's doing. Like, why, like, why are you going to ignite the fire and post a photo with Carly if you want to move on from it? Leave it alone. Be the let Taylor get the final word and let it let it move on if you want to move on so badly. Or just say sorry publicly. Or just say sorry publicly. <laughs> yeah. That would be fine too. So so Taylor, uh, uh, their source is close to Taylor. Taylor's moved on, and, and it's not looking back. The song is her final word. Um, uh, oh, Kim Kardashian said the reality star doesn't get why Taylor Swift keeps harping on it. It's literally been years. She wants to get the final word. Just let her have the final word. You wronged her. You fucked up. This Taylor has come out and said this is the final word. Yes. Let it be. Let it be. Now, if Kim, you do one more thing. Chris is so smart. It's like, put her on the night show now. Get her on TV. It's just it's just my feelings. Is Kim, you did bad. You did wrong. Let her get the final word. Yep. We can all move on. On to our Travis update. Woo-hoo! Daddy's home. Yay, Trav. Um, by the way, did you see them sitting in a booth They at Medeo the other night? They yes, sit they on the same side of the booth. That's, you know, when a real couple's in love. Yeah. Is oh. when you sit on the same side of the booth. And you don't care what anyone thinks. And you know what? When, how Joe and Taylor sat when they went to a restaurant? No, because I don't feel like I ever really cared. Cared? <laughs> Joe sat in the booth and made her sit in the chair. Oh, my God. And now Travis and Taylor. Travis is like, we need the booth because we're both sitting on the same side. We want a canoodle. We want a canoodle. Oh, I just it. love oh. them so much. Um, not only is Travis demanding that Taylor sits on the booth with him on, on the side of the same booth as him, but he's also a Hallmark guy. So he gave us uh, a bunch of stuff on the New Heights podcast this week, and 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 he had Cheeto Santino, Adrian Santino, on the podcast mm-hmm. to co-host. From Dave. Um, and said, yeah, from Dave, are you a Hallmark guy, Trap? Because uh, Andrew's and Andrew's wife and him love Hallmark movies. He says, I dabble now. Yeah, he watches Hallmark movies. Uh, This prompted uh, Santino to question him on whether or not he was sure of that. I mean, whatever. Anyway, he is a big Hallmark guy. And any man that watches Hallmark movies and enjoys Hallmark movies. Is a lover. Is a lover. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, totally. And like is in touch with his feelings. Yeah. This guy cries on camera. He admits to watching Hallmark movies. And, like, the fact that, like, to get a guy that will sit down and watch a Hallmark movie with you. Yeah, oh yeah. That's it's like rarity. Taylor's dream. So, anyway, <laughs> Travis is a perfect man. Watches Hallmark. I wonder what his favorite Hallmark movie is. I would love to know. I hope it's a Christmas one. I kind of hope it's, like, about the, um, getting the, like, the the regular girl marrying the king or whatever. <laughs> so, like, a love story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like a real time love story, like a real time Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, yep. They should make a Hallmark movie about Taylor and Travis. They are a Hallmark story. They are home. I'm sure they will. I'm sure there's like audiobooks coming out that They are a Hallmark film. Oh, they sh- they definitely are. I didn't even realize that. I just that. want it to be a Christmas movie because I can just picture him getting all giddy, her making those cinnamon rolls, them sitting down and watching a Hallmark. They movie do that together. in real life. I know. They're a perfect couple. Okay. <laughs> uh so let's see. Um our our real mother or the uh, Taylor's Taylor's future mother-in-law, I hope, <laughs> yep. is a big-time Swifty. Uh, Donna Kelsey actually commented on the Tortured Poets Department and said, I listened to the whole album, and I listened to it all morning long when it was released. I was just very impressed. She is a very talented woman, and I think it is probably her best work. Uh, when Donna was asked if she had any advice for Swift about growing older, Donna rejected the idea. <laughs> Queen. She doesn't need any advice on from me on anything. In fact, I hope she will give me advice. Oh, literally. What a good mother-in-law. And also just so supportive. I'm sure she loved hearing the songs about Travis. So I so so high school, I'm for yeah. sure convinced it's about Travis. I think the, the Albatross alchemy? is about Travis and not the Alchemy. I, I don't. Think, I think the Alchemy is about Maddie Healy. Mm. Only happens once. 
she was confused. <laughs> Fair enough. Situationships are confusing. They're confusing. Yeah. Um, but the albatross basically says that she... I think the albatross is about him too. Yeah. But I have a hard time feeling like he only gets two songs. Two songs so far. So far, true. So far. Yeah. Only two songs. Two, two so- That's true. But oh, I love that. I love that. Um, Mama Swifty number two, Donna Kelsey, was like, I got to listen to the album right away. I want to talk about it. I'm going to, I know that I'm going to be ass. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to do my homework. Mm-hmm. And she calls it the best work so far. Which means she's listened to everything which else. Which means she's listened to I love that. I know. Other I think it's so sweet. Yeah. And it's so supportive. I love how much the family, the Kelseys yeah. have brought her in, supported her. I just respect her so much. Respect and, her. Yeah. They're not just like, oh, yeah, thanks for coming to the game, Taylor. But they're like She's diving. a great pop star. We love watching her perform. No, they're like, we. her music is so good. She's so smart. I love how they always talk about that how smart she is. Made. Ed Kelsey sitting over here explaining yep. the difference between Taylor, Taylor's version and the stolen version. It's <laughs> so cute. It's so good. Yeah, it's really. And they're um, how the dads are like kind of friends. I love seeing the pictures of the dads. And I'm sure her brother is so stoked. He's like, you're dating Travis Kelsey. Hell yes. I get to go to the football Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but like I I wonder, like I really wish we could get Donna in and like or Ooh. someone to like question her. Like what's your favorite song? What don't you like? Like I just want to know her full depth, in-depth opinion on. Now that you love her, how did you feel when you were listening to all these? Oh, especially like thank you, Amy. What did you think? Yeah. About all that, because now that you actually know Taylor as a person, yeah, are you infuriated for her? Yeah, like I want to know those true thoughts. Like I appreciate that she thinks it's really good, but I want to I want to know from like a mom perspective on Taylor's side. Like, what does she feel about all these horrible shit she's had to go through to get to this point? She now, but the best thing is, is like Taylor's Swift's mom, Andrea, has always been such a mama bear, uh-huh. and now Taylor has two real big mama bears, like like Donna Kelsey. I would imagine would go to war for Taylor Swift. I agree. She kind of is by protecting her Mm -hmm. in so many ways. Because as much as I want to know this information, I still think it's beautiful how she does keep, you know, their relationship and everything that's going on there pretty private on behalf of them. It's really special. She has like a big actual like real her family, now Travis's family, like around her at all times. Like support. Like she has like a big family now. Protection. Protection from everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. <laughs> um, this is a really big deal. We're moving on to tour talk and theories. Mm. Our tour talk and theory segment. So, will tortured poets department be added to the eras? Looks list? like it from everything I've seen online. Oh my gosh! So we've dug up some clues. Thank you, TikTokers. Yes. So, so Taylor put out a YouTube shorts um, rehearsing for, we have a little less than a fortnight to go until she returns to the stage in <laughs> that Paris. That was really good. Thanks. Um, and she put out a, a, a YouTube shorts of her rehearsing. And there have been things in this video from her rehearsing on the tour. The top hats and the canes and the shoes. Things we've never seen before. Yep. So I think we should go through them one by one. Did you also see the video of her singing Lover the last time? She looks, like, so over singing that song. Because <laughs> like, I'm just wondering, where is it going to go? Yes. Okay, good point. So will she cut uh, uh, songs from the show to add Tortured Poets Department? Mm-hmm. Or will she just make it a four-hour show? Oh, I think make it a four-hour show. I don't think she's cutting shit. Oh, my gosh. She's not cutting it. I'm going to spend all my money again. No, going, literally. Like, like, we're going to have to see the show all over again. I'm, I saw it four times. I'm going to have to see it four more times. <laughs> I saw it twice. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering the same thing. The, the problem is, though, is this is going to make it impossible to get tickets because everyone is going to have to see it again. And I think, Oh, you're I, so I'm, right. I'm praying that she just does the whole U.S. tour again. Oh, poor thing if she has to do that, but I, <laughs> we I hope it. so too. We need it. Okay. So first up, there is a white microphone. Now, mm-hmm. she originally had um, posted all of the microphones. She posted all of the microphones. Mm-hmm. And we never saw the white. We never, we never saw the white microphone on right. tour. It was an Easter egg. <gasps> now we're seeing why there was a white microphone because she knew all along 
that she was going to add the tortured poets department to the set list. There's a white microphone. There is wow, a white. I seen that. That's amazing. There's a white guitar. What we've never seen a white guitar. Mm-hmm. So there's dancers with top hats, canes, and that's lending to like a circus atmosphere. We've never seen top hats. We've never seen canes or that old school Fortnite video type vibe. Right. Yep. Uh, we have seen. Excuse me. Um. So there's top hats. We've talked about this in the video. Where else have we seen top hats? In the Fortnite video. Mm -hmm. Top hats when she's in the Fortnite video. We've seen... There's a a lot of proof here. Sorry. Uh, The TTPD logo she's standing behind where she's in that lilac skirt. Yep. And the whole video is in black and white. What else is in black and white? (laughs) Fortnite. Fortnite. And the shoes? The shoes... I can recognize that heel. There, it's 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 very regularly known that Taylor rehearses in the shoes that she is going to be actually be performing in. Yes. So, like when she was doing the Midnight's Era, she had those boots on. Yes. Because she has to walk around and feel what it's going to feel like to be in, of course, the in stilettos the sh- in the shoes. Yeah. So she's walking around in this YouTube shorts and these black, funky looking shoes we've never seen before, but actually we have seen them before. In the Fortnite music video. Yes, ma'am. We have seen those. She has an office desk and chair on stage that we have never seen before. Different from the man because the man's desk is up at the top of yes. the stage. This one's in the middle of the stage. Do you think she's going to come out with a one of the dancers typewriting and then it's going to be like. I, you know what I think? This theory just came to my mind right now. Uh, Post Malone is putting out a new country album mm-hmm. and I pray that Post Malone is going to be one of an, an – because she's had <gasps> big openers on her tour. Oh, my God. He's going to be an opener. But I think maybe some of those have been confirmed. But she could throw in another one, an yeah. opener, and then that way Post Malone could come out and sing Fortnite with her on tour. I I love Posty. I'm all about that. We live for Post. He he came in this office one time. He said, and I'm so person. jealous. That's exactly what Charlie said. He was so nice. I complimented on his blue eyes and told him I was, like, sinking into the ocean of his blue eyes. <laughs> What did he say? He said, thank you. Oh, wow. He's so pretty in person. Like, he does not get enough credit. No, yeah, he's very handsome. But I think it's confirmed, right? Tortured Poets will be on. Oh, it is. Because she wouldn't have put that out. She she knows we're crazy. She knows we're crazy. The Great War has started again. And I'm sorry, but she gave us, like, real hard clues. We're not even in the Lulu land on this one. Yeah. No, No, yeah. Real clues. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to fight you for tickets again. Or hopefully we can go together this time. Maybe Charlie has to, because somebody has to baby the baby. Oh. But it can't be you because you're going to go with me. Yeah, I'm going with you. Yeah. Yeah. So our fun fact of the day. We have, this is really fun. The Tennessee Castle, where Taylor Swift filmed her love story music video in 2008, will soon open as a wedding and honeymoon destination. So smart. According the guy to, that's doing this. Oh, this guy is going to make a – Mike Freeman, the owner and creator of Castle Gwynn, mm-hmm. is going to host uh, – That's. this is going to be harder to get a wedding destination here than the Plaza Hotel in June. I saw something that he said the reason he's doing it, he's like, I could not do it anymore. How many inquiries I've gotten – I for proposals for events for weddings. He's like, I have to do it. It's, I'm sure there's already a wait list. And you got married in Nashville. I did. Yeah. Damn. I know. Oh, I know. I was. I was like, do we need to renew our vows? Yeah, you should renew your vows. Yeah. I always thought about where I would get married, and now I know. <laughs> you totally. This is so cool. Book it now. Yeah, literally. I'm gonna have to like fight for my life. Mike Freeman, you are gonna be Mike. A very wealthy. Well, you already own a castle, but you're going to be a very wealthy man. This is the smartest idea anyone's ever had. God. Uh, A little bit about it. Each tower has a winding staircase leading to multiple different rooms. In the North Tower, where Freeman and his wife spent most of their time, the first floors have a foyer. The kitchen has six with 60 brick arches made up of more than 14,000 bricks. Freeman said he can still point to the exact spots where Swift stood as he recorded as she recorded the music video for Love Story, which references the unconditional love Romeo and Juliet shared. Uh, Williams got engaged to his partner, Justin Miller, as 
Oh, wait. Swifty Nick Williams said tying the knot at the castle where the music video was filmed could be a full circle moment for fans. Williams got engaged to his partner, Justin Miller, as love story played in the background of the oh. pop stars era's tour. Oh, so freaking iconic. This is such an amazing opportunity for Swifties everywhere. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you to my man, Mike Freeman. Yes. <laughs> We hear you. We hear you. Most Swifties do not like the tortured poets department. You're wrong. It <laughs> is for the sad girls. Yes. The sad gays and the sad days. Only. Yes. I totally agree. And I I do defer to sad music. So I'm a big fan of it. You're just not listening to. So this man is proving our point mm -hmm. that he is not listening to the lyrics. Totally. So uh, this man... I forget his name. N Neil. We don't need to say your last name. Apparently some famous guy, Neil. Taylor Swift sort of fascinates me as a phenomenon because she's so popular. And I sort of, uh, oh, it's his name is Neil Tennant. Tennant yeah. Uh, and I sort of quite like the whole thing. But when I listen to the records for a phenomenon as big, where are the famous songs? What's Taylor Swift's Billie Jean? When presented with Shake It Off as proof of Taylor's success, at making hits, Neil doubled down, defending it isn't as uh isn't as good as MJ's chart topper and simply not memorable. Now Neil did praise Taylor's vocal ability, but reiterated he's unimpressed over Taylor's discography. I like the fact that it brings all these people together, even multi generational. But I think the one thing disappoint the one disappointing thing is the music, not the lyrics, the music. Like, I just feel like this is a constant argument with people who don't get it and you don't have to. And why you, you don't need to disparage her just because you she's don't not get your, it because you don't like her music. It's it's OK. You don't have to like it. She is one of the most successful artists. She has broken so many Spotify records. Clearly enough people get it that Taylor Swift is going to be fine. Right. And so we don't need to hear it from another person that she doesn't deserve to be where she's at. Clearly she does. And I and, and I just almost, accept it. I almost feel like people were waiting for this moment because it's like, oh, this isn't a pop, pop like yes. banger album. We don't care. But they've been reveling in this moment to be like, oh, it's bad. Oh, I'm or so sick of it. I was telling I was telling my mom this that I'm tired of people coming to me with their criticism because I'm just not the audience. Like talk to each other about it. You're yeah. not gonna convince me. I'm happy that she gets to say all this stuff and move on and I'm excited for the next album. And I love a lot of the songs. I think it's great. I think it's great writing. I like the music. I love Jack. I don't want to hear anything about it. And so I'm just the wrong audience. But do I respect your opinion? Sure. But don't talk to me about it. I'm never going to agree. Never going to agree. So there is this song that I found on TikTok. He remixed um, My Boy Breaks All His Favorite Toys. Oh. And it's truly. So uh, So this song, I heard it and I was like, damn. And people in the comments are like, this is what we wanted, Jack. This song is so good. It's such a banger. Oh, oh here we go again. The voices in his head. Call them rain to end our days of wild. The sickest army ball. Purchased at the mall. With you, let's descend. My plastic smile. The, the fact that this song can be turned into such a banger with just a little remix speaks to how good Taylor Swift is. Right. And like that it can be both. I mean, I would love for Taylor to collaborate with this guy online and actually really work and remix the songs and get a, a quadruple album. Oh my gosh. The Tortured Poets anything. Sad and the Tortured Poets like Dance Party. Dance Party. It is Break so a party. Yeah, if you yeah. so good. If you haven't heard it, listen to this. I'm screaming over it. We can have both. We like both. We're not against both. We want both. Yes. It's so good. I can do it with Broken Heart. It's really poppy. It's poppy and remixed. Um, so that is our show. Thank you, Aaron, for taking time so out of much. your day to come in and, and talk to us. And thank you for being on Swift Team. You can watch us on YouTube. You can listen to us on Spotify, on Apple, wherever you get your podcasts. If you have a comment, leave a comment. If you hate it, say it. If you don't, if you loved it, tell us. Give us your opinions on anything and everything we talked about today. Tell us online. We read your comments. We'll respond to them. Um, thank you so much. Bye. Bye.